Hello and welcome to the 3D Printing Canada CPO1 build video. The CPO1 is an all-in-one printer designed for 3D printing, CNC, and laser head operations. It is a very complete kit and comes with everything you will need to get started with each build process, including safety equipment. It also comes highly pre-assembled. Here's what's in the box. A Creality Instruction Manual, a 3D printing head, a CNC engraving head, a laser engraving head, a power cable, some blank test pieces for both laser centering and CNCing, an aluminum CNC build plate, a sample roll of filament, a pre-assembled X and Z gantry, a pre-assembled base, and a box of accessories that we'll part out now. We have a package of assembly screws, a screw kit for CNC operations and a downward spiral bit, a Creality toolkit with clippers, a pair of clear glasses for CNC operations and tinted glasses for laser operations, tool head mounting screws, a spludger for getting prints off the bed, mounting clamps for the CNC base plate, a spool holder, and a smaller accessory kit with an SD card and other pieces. We'll show you that now. It includes an SD card and reader, clips and screws for a printing cable management system, some wing nuts for the CNC clamp, an extra nozzle, along with some extra screws and cable management accessories. Our first step in the building process will be mounting the gantry to the base plate. The gantry is built from square aluminum extrusion and is extremely sturdy. It slots into a couple guides on the top of the base plate. Once you have it aligned properly, you will feel it click in. Here you can see that I have the printer off the side of the table in order to secure the gantry with the supplied bolts through holes in the bottom. There should be four screws. Flip the printer around and you can repeat the same for the other side. At this point, essentially, the printer is assembled. Now it's just a matter of wiring up the motors properly. Each Z motor is located at the top and you will see a wire labeled Z for each of them. You will see some plastic channels in the grooves of the extrusion. We have to pry these out and route the wires underneath them. Be patient and gentle with the plastic channels as they are easy to bend. Repeat the same for the other side. Next we will secure the X-axis limit switch. It comes pre-assembled on the gantry with its own plate. There is an identical plate for the Z-axis limit switch, so please ensure that you are installing the plate that also has the X-axis motor lead paired with its wiring loom. The plate will install in the front with only two screws. Now we can plug in the X-axis motor. Just like the X-limit switch, the Z-limit switch has a plate that screws into two pre-tapped screws in the front of the printer. One important thing to point out is that the Z-axis has these holes in both the left and right side of the printer. Be sure that you screw it into the left side as shown. To assemble the spool holder, locate the package with the cable clips, T-nuts, and screws. The cable clips are 3D printed and will help support the VGA style cable leading to the print heads. When assembling this part, the screw has to first go through the cable clip, then through the spool holder, and then the T-neck gets screwed on the bottom. Repeat this process for both screws. This shot is taken from the back of the printer. What we're going to do is take the VGA style cable that's coming from the back of the control box and then route it through our cable clips. Make sure to leave enough slack so that it has room to reach the print head. We can fine tune this length later as well. At this point, we can screw in the spool holder. Attach the shaft of the spool holder facing forward. Let's begin by setting up the printer in a 3D printing configuration. Each tool head that comes with the printer has three holes, two on the top and one on the bottom. These holes align with holes in the X-axis gantry plate. Take your time, line the holes up, and then put your first securing screw in. You can leave final tightening until all the screws are in. Here's a view from the back of putting the final screw in its hole. At this point, you should check the alignment of the tool head to make sure it's square with the X-axis gantry plate. 
Then, go around and ensure that all the screws are tightened to satisfaction. The tool head should not move or wobble at all. Creality has chosen to use a VGA style connector for all of their tool heads. Simply plug this in and screw it down. Before firing the printer up, make sure that it's set to 115 volts if you're in North America. After that, we can turn the printer on. The interface of the CP01 is similar to other Creality printers, such as the CR10S Pro, but there are some modifications just for the CP01. Going into the control menu, we can see that we can set the temperature of the print head automatically, manually, we can cool the printer down, or there's a menu called head selection. In this menu, you can manually turn on the 3D print fan, and you can also turn on the laser and CNC head manually as well. We can also do this through G-code though. In our settings menu, we have a typical array of Creality settings, including leveling, refueling, movement, motor control, language, and about. Going into the movement menu, we have a typical movement menu, but we also have the addition of a little icon that's in the top left-hand corner. This icon is used for zeroing all the axes, and you'll use that for setting the calibration properly for both your laser and CNC processes. Let's begin the calibration process by auto-homing the printer. Doing this is going to show us where the Z-axis limit switch sits currently. After the printer is homed, check out the distance between the nozzle and the glass and where it sits. In this case, the nozzle was about 1.5 mm below the level of the glass. To fix this, I'm going to move the Z up to about 70 mm. Moving the Z up will allow me to get access to the Z-limit switch screws. Now I can adjust the Z-limit switch up and down to make any adjustments necessary to get the nozzle close to the glass. After that, let's auto-home the printer again. Repeat this process until you see the tip of the nozzle come close to the glass level. Next, we can move the Z-axis up to about 100 millimeters to load the filament. Go to the control menu and let's set the temperatures of the head and the bed. Go to manual, click on nozzle preheat and preheat it to about 200 degrees Celsius, and preheat the bed to about 60 degrees Celsius. Load your filament on the spool and cut it at a 45 degree angle. Now we can go settings, refuel, then feed about 50 millimeters of filament through the extruder. Once it's done, remove any excess. Go back to the settings menu and press leveling. The printer will auto-home itself again and bring it to the left corner. You can see here that the nozzle is just a bit under the glass still, so I'm going to actually adjust the bed manually by turning the wheel. The goal here is to get the nozzle slightly above the glass. At this point, we can do the four-corner paper leveling method to get the bed level to the nozzle. Slip a piece of paper under and press the number 1 on the leveling menu. That will bring the printer nozzle to spot 1. Move the paper back and forth. You want to adjust it so that the nozzle just scrapes on the paper and provides a bit of resistance, but not enough to stop it completely. If your paper is scrunching up as such, it's probably too tight. Loosen it up a bit. Let's do the same for the remaining four corners. Making sure that you keep the paper underneath the nozzle during movement will ensure that you don't scrape the bed if the nozzle is somehow too close. Double check the middle to make sure it feels good as well. You can repeat this process several times if you don't find it gets good results on the first try. At this point, the printer is calibrated and ready to print. After printing, or if you need to change heads, to unload the filament, move the Z-axis up while the printer is at temperature. Carefully grab the metal case of the tool head from the bottom and squeeze on the lever. Then manually extrude about one millimeter of filament and then quickly pull it out. Make sure to remove the excess. When changing any tool heads, please ensure that the printer is turned off as unplugging the VGA cable while the printer is on may damage things. You can start by loosening everything up and then unscrewing the VGA cable. The tool changing on this printer is extremely convenient because a tool change only takes about three minutes to do. Let's try putting on the CNC head. The CNC head has a small motor on it that you can attach drill bits to or end mills to. This is great for carving, engraving, or light CNC work. 
The process of attaching it is just the same as the 3D printing head. To assemble the CNC build plate, you need the aluminum build plate, the black anodized shims, the long tapered screws, the wing nuts, and the clamps themselves. You'll also need something to cut or engrave. The aluminum build plate has holes all around the edge. On one side, you see the holes are tapered. That's the side that the tapered screws are going to screw into. Depending on your workpiece, you can use the screws to position the clamps in ways that don't interfere with the tool head or allow enough room to actually clamp your piece down properly. To assemble the clamp, put it over the screw, slide on one of the black shims and orient it so that it is in the grooves of the actual clamp itself. Then you can use the wing nuts to screw it down properly. These clamps are pretty versatile, so you just need to adjust it in a way that's going to hold your piece well. Repeat the same process for the rest of the clamps. When doing CNC work, you do need your workpiece to be secure. At this point, I'm making a judgment call that the clamp is too far out from my workpiece, so I'm going to unscrew the wing nut to move it up just a slight bit. Undo the front bed clips of the CPO1 and the glass sheet should just come off. Then you can slip in the CNC build surface into the same area. Make sure that it is pressed into the clips properly and secure it from the front as well. The CNC head comes with a chuck tool that allows you to load whatever bit you want. It handles the 1 8 inch shank of the included bit just fine. Simply insert the bit and tighten it well. To calibrate the machine for CNC work, we have to put the tip of the end mill to a zero point of our choosing on our workpiece. For this example, let's choose the left hand corner. Begin by manually setting the X and Y coordinates with your hands. After that, to set our Z, let's go to the settings menu, then move, and then move the Z axis down. Be very careful with this as it's very possible to bury the bit. Move the Z axis down 10 millimeters at a time until you get close to the bed. As you get closer to the bed, change the units to 1mm instead of 10mm and keep moving. And then for very fine tuning, change to 0.1mm. After you've got the Z positioned where you want it, then double click that button in the top left corner and it will zero all the axes. To turn the head on manually to test it, go to Control, Head Selection, and then CNC. You'll see the CNC head spin up. At this point, you can go to the main menu, press select, and then select your file loaded onto your SD card for your G-code. Here are some example pieces that were milled on the CPO-1, as well as a laser-centered piece of wood on the right. The CPO-1 made short work of this copper board and proved that it could be used for rapid prototyping for those who are looking for quick design circuit boards. It also performed well for smaller wooden pieces such as this Celtic charm. This machine is great for small pieces like this or also doing things such as engraving box tops. Setting up the laser is very easy. It's the same as the CNC setup except that you have to keep the head about 60 millimeters from the top of the build surface. This piece was centered at about three millimeters per second and the faster you go, the lighter the laser lines will be. Remember to always use eye protection when either using the laser or the CNC. Stay tuned to our YouTube channel for guides on setting up laser cut files as well as setting up CNC cut files. As always, we hope you enjoyed this guide.